Hi there, this is my A-Level Chemistry AQA 2025 some predictions for paper three this year. So before we go anywhere, I don't make this video until after paper one and paper two, just so I have an idea from what people have said about what's already come up. Now we have to address this question because it's all over the internet right now. Are this year's AQA chemistry, and it's, I know it's not just chemistry, it's perhaps affecting um, biology as well, but are they harder than before? So this is a super difficult one to um, judge. I've not seen the paper, I've only seen like uh, people's comments about it. And the last two have certainly upset quite a lot of students. So I'm thinking that maybe grade boundaries might be a little bit lower, but I also think that one thing to remember is that um, your final A-level paper, the one that you really sit, will always be harder than anything else you've done because you will have never remotely seen these topics before and it will feel harder because there's more riding on it. Um, and every year there is a hard paper that people come out of and go, what was that? That was really bad. Now, what doesn't happen is loads of people don't fail or not get in their university when that happens. OK, so there are tough papers. Yes, perhaps this year we are mixing it up a bit. That was to be expected. The AQA papers before were getting quite formulaic, quite predictable. So this year. I guess what they're trying to do is to stop people just being able to just completely always know exactly what's on the paper. So with that in mind, let's pick ourselves up, have a little think about what's already been um, and what hasn't been up and what we might have been expecting in paper one and paper two that wasn't there and look at what might be coming up for paper three. So likely topics. We, if we've not had very much about rate equations, that seemed very odd to get all the way through paper two without anything about rate equations. Now, the thing about rate equations is there is a strong link to practical work and determining initial rates. So therefore, it's a really, really solid chance that this is going to come up for paper three. And the good news is you've probably already realised it quite well for paper two. Equilibrium calculations, again, we should have been already revising these with paper one and paper two and perhaps a little bit disappointed that they've not come up. There's a strong link to practical work again. And then our lattice energy, big surprise, nothing on uh, Born Harbour cycles or lattice energy on paper one. Um, but that also has some practical links because dissolving ionic compounds has an enthalpy change associated with it, our enthalpy of solution. And so maybe there's going to be some practical questions related to that as well. Lattice energy is also quite synoptic. And I'll talk about that in a moment, about what types of questions we could be getting there. Um, and then we've got organic mechanisms. So there's always some questions on mechanisms. The reason I've put this here is because when it gets a little bit more synoptic style, um, comparison of organic mechanisms is a big area where you can have longer mark questions, maybe six mark questions. So comparing the way that two different functional groups react. So when you are going back over your organic functional groups, um, make sure that you try not to treat each mechanism sort of like very, very separate, but try to think to yourself, well, how does the way that a haloalkane reacts compared to the way that an aldehyde or ketone reacts, so nucleophilic addition versus substitution? Or how does the way that an alkene behaves compare to how benzene behaves, so electrophilic addition versus substitution? That kind of thing. Um, also link mechanisms to isomerism. So this idea of like different mechanisms can re result in perhaps optical isomers or mixtures of optical isomers, depending on shape whether we can get EZ isomers from, for example, elimination reactions where we make double bonds, where we get structural isomers, perhaps because a cation forms in a different position on the carbon chain. 
Mass spec, there's not really been much on on a time of flight, so maybe that's going to be in paper three, or maybe they just decided not to include it. If it's in paper three, there are various ways that they can make that a little bit more synoptic. And we've already had a question about electrospray, but what hasn't been for a while is looking at mass spec uh, in relation to halogens. So this idea that chlorine has different isotopes, 35 and 37, but it's also a molecule. So there are two atoms in the molecule, which means that you've got combinations of different molecular masses, depending which isotopes are present. And this could be extended to an organic context. So haloalkanes, if you've got a carbon chain with a chlorine attached, that chlorine could have two different masses, which means you'd have two different molecular iron peaks in your mass spec. And the more chlorine atoms you have, the more statistically different masses you could get for your molecule. OK, let's talk about practicals. So um, determining rates, since there's not been so much, we've had some activation energy stuff, but we've not had a lot on um, like the rate equation and orders and mechanisms. So just make sure that you know your essentials, particularly disappearing cross reaction and clock reaction. So we had a bit on volume of gas last year. So we haven't had much about this idea of waiting for a colour change or for a cross to disappear. You've also got chromatography TLC not really come up very much and that works very well in an organic context. Chromatography is also a way to monitor a reaction, remember, so we can use TLC to tell uh, what I've got left in my reaction mixture, for example, hydrolysis reactions. Measuring enthalpy changes. So I mentioned lattice enthalpy. If we measure the enthalpy changes solution, we could maybe use that in an like a di indirect way using Hess's law. You've got your other enthalpy change experiments. So, for example, neutralization. You've got enthalpy of combustion, that's going to link to bond enthalpy, that's going to link to organic reactions. So it could be on paper three as well. And then preparation of an organic liquid. So this is the separating funnel experiment where you get your two different layers, different densities. Uh, you add some hydrogen carbonate to neutralize acid quite often, and then you separate everything out, use a drying agent and filter it off. So make sure that you know the steps for that. Recrystallization came up last year, so it feels like possibly we might get asked about preparation of organic liquid. And don't forget your essentials, reflux and distillation. And the reason that they tend to come up in paper three as well is because you've got links to intermolecular forces and boiling points. For example, aldehydes, low boiling points because there's no hydrogen bonding, that kind of thing. I talked about synoptic content as well, so some other links that could be coming up, finding an equilibrium constant. So there hasn't been much on Kc or Kp. For example, doing a titration to find out how much of something there is at equilibrium, which could then lead to an ice table. Indirect enthalpy changes I've just mentioned. So one example of that, for example, is taking um, a hydrated salt and a non-hydrated salt and dissolving both of them, measuring the enthalpy changes, and then indirectly using Hess's law. Group two, not feeling a lot on that. There's been a lot of other inorganic, so it may be that they just don't have a lot, but they do link to solubility, um, and they do link to pH as well. So, for example, barium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, pH calculations and titrations. Um, and then colorimetry, which can be used to measure rates of reaction, but could also be used to determine concentrations of colored substances such as transition metal complexes. And then organic compounds. So you could get uh, titrations to find out the number of moles of an acid present. Maybe it's an acid with two carboxylic acid groups. That's getting quite common now as well. You can have redox titrations involving organic compounds. And then comparisons of mechanisms I've already mentioned. So it's a really common longer response question is to compare mechanisms either in terms of the different isomers that you make or comparing the way that two different functional groups react and why they behave differently. Make sure you know your definitions related to electrophile, nucleophile, acid-base chemistry when it comes to organics.
Um, just finally, a final push. Um, there's a practical playlist that I've got on YouTube, which has some of these other things, especially enthalpy change experiments, clock reactions for rates of reaction, uh, some stuff about um, I've forgotten what I was going to say. Buffers, calculations, we've kind of mostly had that. There's lots of things on there, so go and have a look at that practical playlist. There's also oh, um, purification of organic liquids and recrystallization. Um, obviously, there's multiple choice questions on paper three, so they've got a free on the website download of 50 different multiple choice questions, and they've got video walkthroughs in case you get stuck. And practice papers and predictive papers are all on sale now because it's the end of exams, as are my extended response booklet and calculations if you just wanted a final bit of practice. Or if you're not taking A-levels this year and you just want to stock up ready for next year, or you're a teacher or tutor and want to stock up in some cheaper resources, now is a good time. If you are taking your A-levels this year, let me know how it goes in the comments. Um, try not to cry. Don't let them get to you. It's all going to be fine.